just made some little samples of um, steel. This is, I think, about what's that? A mil, maybe less, 0.9. It's the sort of stuff I use for patching bits of wing, exterior body panels, bits and pieces like that. So I've got four of those, and what I'm going to do is just show what happens when you do these techniques, trying to lap weld that onto there. This is probably the one of the easiest techniques because you're less likely to burn holes than if you were, say, trying to do a butt weld along two pieces like that, because the heat can go into this panel and be dissipated away. The two panels are basically touching, which means the heat transference is really good. When you are butt welding like this, the, the risk is that your weld is on more one panel than it is the other, and therefore the heat goes into that one, and effectively you've only got half as much material to take heat away. Um, we'll get to butt welding in a minute, but for the moment, I'm just going to return this to the minimum power settings and then run a seam along there and a row of sti uh, you know, broken stitch along the other side. I actually don't know what the technical term for that is. You'll have to bear with me with a lot of my descriptions. I know what I mean, but some of you might not do. I'm not going to bother clamping it. We're just firmly in the realm of freestyling and I'm still checking that this camera's working. So I'm just going to tack it first. I'll do top and bottom, that way they're not interfering with my weld. Just for simplicity and um, consistency at this stage, I'm going to hold the panels close together. I'm not going to clamp them, I'm just going to hold it there. Um, I want to demonstrate in a moment what happens if the two pieces of metal aren't actually touching. That is a terrible weld because I'm trying to do it one handed, but you get the idea. With that welder setting, even though it's on minimum, which has got so much heat distortion in there it's really sunk in and looks crap so if I demonstrate on this side it's a lot less distortion there is still distortion there There's less penetration, but it's still just coming through. So you know that that will have been a decent world and stayed on there. And that was with the minimum power setting, we're still getting distortion. I'll just show you now next power setting up. So this is one max. So stage two of potentially six and a tiny turn up on the wire feed. So that's tacked on. Nice world, but again, all loads of heat distortion. This whole area is rising up. So less power into the part 
for, for the same length of world there's less distortion still some distortion and because of there's been less heat this hasn't sat down as low as that world has but on the back you can still see that it's made a molten pool all the way through not as deep as that obviously but you don't need it that deep so that's just a demonstration of the two lowest power settings now I wouldn't do um, that kind of repair and I didn't do that kind of weld repair when I was putting the wing on that car because it just causes so much distortion even that does it what you need to do is break your welds up over a much bigger area and I'll show you that now so what I'm going to do now is try and demonstrate a technique for lap welding two pieces of steel together without causing warping. So for myself, I'm going to go to the second of, or the second lowest setting I've got. And then I'm going to try and reduce the amount of heat that goes into the panel. Is that recording? Yes it is. Just by not holding the trigger down for too long. And by distributing the spots along the length of the panel that I'm welding. You can see how unbelievably sensitive this thin metal is to heat. So even though all I've done is attack for a matter of seconds, probably not even a second, it's, it hasn't distorted yet, but I know if I'd done any more, it probably would have done. When I've tacked it, I've aimed the MIG wire at kind of the join between the two surfaces. If I had aimed it onto this one more, I probably wouldn't have got penetration into that one. The problem being that when you then grind this smooth, you've basically lost all the strength. You really want to guarantee that you've got the penetration into this and are kind of sort of dragging the weld onto this top piece. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to put another tack in here and again, going to aim it there, but probably roll the trigger a little bit onto the lower panel. So again, I've got a tack, which I know is on there, but it's also the majority of the heat is on here. And really, it's that same process all the way along to try and build up one continuous weld. One thing I will do, when you're doing tacking and you break the arc, it is possible that you get these little beads of weld, and that again just makes for inconsistency with the next weld you do so if that's happening just make sure you snip back do a nice clean piece of wire again So I've done three in a row there, and I probably wouldn't want to do any more than that on this piece, because I'm almost certain that it would start to um, warp. So I know that's good, I know that's well stuck together and that's stuck together, so I'm just going to continue building these up until I end up with one whole join. Some people use compressed air and they'll blow the air onto this to try and help cool it down. Some people use a damp wet cloth, other people just use patience. I'm not going to use any at the moment because I can't be bothered. Um, I don't like the idea of a wet rag because you're putting water on something that you've probably just cut out because it got water on it and went rusty. Um, you can buy putties which limit the heat spread 
without affecting your weld but I've never never had anything to do with that and then other people have suggested putting a block of copper on the back um, as a to act as a heat soak but as long as you take your time you should be okay I also like to have a wire wheel on a drill. Just helps get any of the crap out of the way while you're welding. It invariably forms, but that allows you to just get back to nice metal for your next weld. Do you remember me talking about having your harness straight and consistency of welds? Well, that's a good demonstration. When I just dragged this drill over, I messed up my harness and it straight away had an effect. So now I've got a very pert, shitty weld there, which isn't quite in the right place because the wire didn't come out in the right place or where I thought it was going to be, which is annoying. Some people will also grind these smooth as they go. I tend not to, purely because the more mass of metal you have here, the more it acts as a heat soak, which means that the heat has somewhere to go other than in your nice panel that you're trying to keep flat. So I tend to just leave it there until I've got the end, then linish it smooth and then fill any pinholes or voids or bits I missed. I'm welding into paint there, which is why that one's going funny, but straight away you can hear and see the result of trying to weld up paint and a surface that isn't perfectly clean. Right, so you kind of get the idea that that has allowed me to weld that on without causing really very much heat distortion. There is a bit, but that's because I'm hurrying. But now watch what happens if I actually try and seam weld that. So you get a nice weld, but it is starting to deform already. And if that was a bigger, flatter panel, I mean, this is a curve, so it's probably quite resistant to warping anyway, but it would really be fucking all fucking up all over the place. <gasps> this is quite a good demonstration. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll deliberately mess this up a bit. creating a gap there. <sighs> what I'm going to try and demonstrate is that if you have a gap and you're welding nicely, it just becomes more problematic. That's cleaned out, but there's still the opportunity for gases to form in there and not vent out or for this panel here to take too much heat and burn away. Probably won't because it's quite thick, but um, we'll see. <sighs> see how it's just becoming a bit of an arse to fill that in? That's why the benefit of having 
panels really tight together before you start. That's why you might see in videos me hitting the panels as I go along, just to close them up and make sure those gaps, is, gaps aren't there. Those ones, I've done the interval between the worlds a lot shorter. So it's buzz, 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 rather than buzz, buzz, buzz. And you can see how much flatter that, so we haven't changed the world of settings, but because I've been holding the trigger longer, there's been more heat in that area, which means that the world has sat flatter in comparison with the uh, longer interval stitches. So I hope some of that has been helpful. On the back side, you can see the kind of variation between the different worlds. The independent like stitch worlds, the spot worldy ones, broken arc worlds, those have come through as little independent dots. That bit down there, that's where I had the heavier seams and they've been more uniformly, sort of uniform levels of penetration in there. I'm now going to deliberately cut some slots in this uh, to demonstrate butt welding techniques or just butt welding and what happens with the different power settings again. To simulate butt welding rather than cutting up panels, uh, sorry, rather than cutting up my Zintec sheet and making more tabs and then sticking them together, I've created much the same thing by just cutting slots in here with a 1mm disc. And that's actually quite apt because there will be times when you cut sections out of a wing and then want to weld it back in again. So you might cut something out that you want to save and then weld it back in later once you've fixed whatever was behind it. So again, like we did with the other video, I'm just going to show what happens with the different power settings. So I'm on absolute minimum at the moment and I'm just going to put some tacks in there and that's what you would be doing. You wouldn't want to try and weld this in a seam because it would probably just burn a big hole. That big dent is a dent, it's not heat distortion or anything. So that's a tack. Um, I'm going to continue that process to the end and then we'll have a look on the other side and see what it looks like. You can see in that one the weld struck up and because I hadn't left it very long since the previous one it started to burn the metal back again and bearing in mind you're on the absolute minimum settings of this welder with 0.6 wire it shows you just how easy it is to burn holes with this sort of stuff. And again, that one is just at the point of wanting to burn back. position so that is filling in effectively a one millimeter gap which is the thickness of my cutting disc and that's what it looks like on the back side now that's ideal because it means that you can probably linish the front somewhere close to flat and you know you've got the thickness of the steel you require. What can sometimes happen, and um, this will need to be demonstrated with some donor pieces of metal, but I will go and clamp that up because it is worth knowing. Hold on. I just set up another test piece, two bits of Zintex steel in butt weld configuration 
this one has no gap between the two so imagine you'd made yourself a really nice patch repair and you'd spent ages religiously getting the gap cock on perfect and then you welded it together so these are minimum settings for thin bodywork whoops that was intended to be a tack didn't go so well let's get rid of that hopefully you get the idea but I'm just going to weld it together following the same technique as I did on that wing it's a bit windy so my shielding gas has just been blown away but what I'm trying to demonstrate is that that doesn't guarantee that you get penetration all the way through. Because there's no gap between the two, the welds, and using that technique, the weld has just sat on the top surface. So if you grind that smooth, From the top surface, it looks like a nicely finished weld, but there's really been very little penetration. Consequently, you can probably quite easily just open it up again and it'll just snap. Basically, there's no penetration in there. So, yeah, in fact, you can still see the cut marks. So when you butt weld stuff, you either have to get the heat penetration higher or better by one of two methods. One is that you turn the welding voltage up, but of course, or you seam weld it, but of course you then warp your upper panels. So really what you've got to do is clamp it, but clamp it with a strategically placed gap. And I'm not going to tell you what that gap should be because I generally just eyeball it. Um, but let's go for, I don't know, what's that, about a millimetre? Again, I'm not doing anything with the welder settings and I'm going to try and use the same uh, technique but we'll just see what the difference is by having a gap in the middle So I've tried to maintain the same sort of weld technique and if anything probably could have been a bit hotter but if you turn it over can you see how the penetration is better so now when we grind that smooth So again, yep, it's still recording. Um, it looks like a nice invisible weld from the top side. On the back side, we've got better penetration, but it's still not great. Ow, that's hot, obviously. So 
so I can't I can't just bend it as easily and snap it so that's a good start but it's still not perfect so if I cut through that that way So although that didn't look like great penetration and that we've we have got a void there so i'm not saying this is the perfect way to do it but the demonstration being that if you have the two panels butt welded with no gap like that you have to have higher voltage or power to get the same penetration so if you're welding on something like a rear quarter where you're not going to be able to get back to the inside to check on the penetration and you want to be able to linish it smooth and have it flat you've got to be really sure that you're getting good penetration because it's so easy to sand it back and basically you have find you have no strength so i'm going to try and do it again but the ultimate result which is to have good penetration be able to linish the flat front um, smooth and yet still have um, sufficient thickness there for a good good strong work piece afterwards so again I'm gonna go for a gap of about I don't know a little bit more than a millimeter perhaps I've turned the welder up uh, to two no one max so it's second from lowest setting and we'll tack it and do exactly the same operation again. So linish smooth from the front surface, turn it over, got pretty good penetration. It's still where I tacked it, I think it was, well the clamp was that end and the tack here was sitting proud on the surface and when I welded either side of it that's prevented me from getting good penetration and you can kind of see that in the result here but it's still better than it was but this is why a lot of my repairs don't bother going silly and grinding them smooth unless I know I can get to the back surface. So down here for instance I don't intend on grinding that any smoother than that. That was a lap weld but that was a butt weld which I did linish smooth but some of these other ones I just won't bother because I don't want to lose the strength. Right now I'm going to go and get some bits and pieces and do some plug welding kind of trying to replicate spot welds.